Hello everybody, it's Pete from Mind Connect Gaming, and I just finished up the Yorktown uh, assault on British Redoubts 9 and 10 scenario uh, from CNC Commands and Colors Tricorn. Um, Commands and Colors Tricorn is the newest addition to my gaming collection. I got it at uh, Gen Con. I love the system. I've played the system in many other games, from Battlecry to Memoir 44 to Commands and Colors Ancients, Commands and Colors Medieval, you name it. Um, I think Napoleonics might be the only one I haven't played. But anyway, um, had to add this to the collection. And um, I went ahead and got the expansion right away as well, due in part because well, I visited the Yorktown battlefield this summer and, you know, really enjoyed my time traipsing around that battlefield and learning, you know, more details about the history of it. And I really wanted to play the Yorktown battle um, as this decisive, you know, battle of the American Revolution. So anyway, you can see the setup and the... Um, the historical background there and then the battle notes with Washington commanding the Continental Army and Lord Cornwallis commanding the British. Um, seven victory banners for victory. A few special rules that played in big in this playthrough um, with temporary victory banners that the uh, Continentals could get for each hex uh, of the uh, redoubt of a British redoubt that they controlled and then the British received a temporary victory banner as long as no American or French units occupied any of the hexes of the redoubt. So anyway, the battle's over and it played out kind of like history with a huge victory, uh, decisive victory for the allied forces of the French and Continental Army over the British with some Hessians in there as well you can see every single victory banner that was won in this battle was won by french units all seven the final score was seven to two and the battle really played out right here uh at redoubt number nine and you can see the french were able to storm this redoubt and, and really push the the british uh off I don't know, kind of easy, not really easily. The British put up some defense, but um, the cards kind of played out right for the British as well, or for the French as well. They were able to get their superior numbers up fast and really, uh, you know, attack the uh, the redoubts pretty hard. Um, but uh, th th you know, this is kind of where the battle was where the battle was won. Um, the British attempted to get these heavy cannons up, and they also had some reinforcements back here at this redoubt uh, that unfortunately really, for the British, weren't able to really effectively get in position to provide much support. And then you can see over here, so we're over on the British left flank here, over at redoubt number 10. Now that is Alexander Hamilton. And that is John Lawrence, and they didn't even really get any action. Um, the British held Redoubt 10, but there really wasn't even an Allied or, or Continental assault on this Redoubt because the French were so dominating over on the British right flank at Redoubt number 9, as you can see. So, um, you know. Hamilton, the glory-seeking Hamilton, you know, in real life, got his glory here at Redoubt, uh, you know, number 10, and uh, never really had that chance uh, here in this replay that I had. John Lawrence would later go on uh, to help negotiate the surrender, surrender terms of the Battle of Yorktown. He never really got any action either. So, anyway, uh, I mean... The battle plays out, you know, uh, historically with a, you know, significant allied victory, but 
the Continental Army really didn't do a whole lot in this playthrough. It was all pretty much Rochambeau and uh, Zweibrücken, um, the, you know, the two French generals here that really, you know, led the assault on Redoubt 10 and did all the damage and won all those victory points. So anyway, CNC Tricorn, I love it. I love the theme. You know, I'm a huge fan of American Revolutionary War history, really just 18th uh, century history in general. Um, oh, another note real quick here too. This scenario, as you can see right here, this is the original setup. I mean, this is a tough one for the British to win, just like in real life. Um, the overwhelming numbers that the Allied forces have here um, are going to make it tough for the British to win this thing. And, and you know, I, I think they could, as long as they could prevent the assault from quickly getting up on each redoubt. And that, in my playthrough, the French just had the right cards to get their troops up on the redoubt and get into melee fast. If the British can keep this at a distance, they've got a shot and, and they got to get this support up there to help as well in a hurry. Um, so anyway, I mean, the odds were, are stacked pretty heavy against the, uh, pretty heavy against the, the British and the Hessian forces here, um, as they were, you know, at the real Yorktown, the French, you know, are fully engaged at this time and making a huge difference. So, but anyway, uh, commands and colors, tricorn, uh, I don't know. It might be my favorite of the entire commands and colors system. I absolutely love, um, how tactical it is because it's not, it's not as much about just, get your hands dirty, shoot it up, chuck the dice, you know, get, get it bloody. It's much more about tactics on the battlefield, form, holding your formations, because there's an emphasis in this game uh, in several different ways um, where you really got to, like morale checks and rally checks become really, really important so that your units don't route from the battlefield. And obviously... Uh, one of the ways that you can prevent that is by really holding your formations um, so that units are supported by, you know, two adjacent hexes. Another thing is I think the leaders become, the leader placement becomes a lot more important too, uh, whether you're placing them in a, like an offensive type of position or a defensive type of position, but in relationship to the units that you have on the battlefield and how they can help, you know, sort of hold the line as well. Um, so I, I don't know. I find this game, it moves a little slower than like, especially like Commands and Colors Medieval, which is just really bloody and moves a lot faster with an emphasis on cavalry. cavalry. Um, you know, this moves a little slower because it, it tries to capture, uh, the importance of morale and leadership on the battlefield and formations and holding formations and holding the line. Um, and, you know, the reality was is that, you know, the weaponry of the time, you know, wasn't going to allow for, you know, an incredible amount of, you know, casualties on the battlefield, you know, relatively speaking to other eras. So um, I think it captures that pretty well. But in doing that, I think it makes it a lot more tactical um, for the player because you really got to think a lot more about you know, holding your, your formations and where you place your leaders and things like that. So I think it's really well done. Um, anyway, uh, there it is. That's my playthrough uh, of uh, the you know, Yorktown uh, assault on British Redoubts 9 and 10 uh, on the October 14th, 1781. Uh, you know, the British surrender would come five days later on October 19th. And ultimately, this would be the last like major engagement of the uh, the American Revolution. Um, for me, again, like I said, really cool being able just a few weeks ago on vacation to go visit this battlefield, and then now to come home and replay it. And that's part of what I love about war games because you connect the history, um, you know, to it all. So, anyway, this has been Pete from Mind Connect Gaming and uh hopefully we'll see you in the near future. Hopefully I can get the learn this stuff and get the technology right and free up, you know, get whatever I need to maybe do some 
like live playthroughs or playthroughs recorded and posted um, because I enjoy consuming a lot of your guys' great videos and I figured, well, at some point in time, I need to, I, I think it'd be fun to just put my own videos out there. Um, definitely inspired, if you haven't checked out, there's a YouTube channel, um, uh, a, a guy over in Finland who does, uh, it's called, his channel is Almost Solitaire. And I've started watching some of his playthroughs of Commands and Colors Ancients. He's got some other stuff on there, The Great War. Um, and he does a fantastic job and provides so much narrative and history. And Anyway, watching his videos started getting me thinking like, man, you know, I consume and consume. And at some point in time, I got to start producing a little something, you know, to contribute to the uh, hobby here. So anyway, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll talk to you later.